Okay, so this is the second part of the video, and this is, I think, more important than anything that have to do with the coffee business whatsoever. And I'm so excited and so, I mean, I'm just blown away that it's taken me 30 years of, of a journey and you 30 years of a journey of being self-employed, um, looking for every kind of resource. So I, I, and I'll tell, I'm gonna tell a little backstory on my personal journey. So my personal journey, being a self-employed person was, you know, I started from with nothing, you know, we both did. Um, didn't come with any money, didn't come with any loans. We, we literally started with $1 and now we've you know, built our businesses, we're very successful. But I think what the misconception I always had is if I read enough books, marketing books, um, which I've read stacks of them, I have a library of marketing books, business books, um, understanding business, um, all, the, all the psychology of business, all these things that I thought were very, very important mm -hmm. um, and we both read them. I mean, I was definitely more obsessed with them. I thought there was going to be, I was going to read something that was going to give me something that was going to give me an edge over the competitor or help me be a better business person. Um, and what I realized that, you know, after 30 years that, you know, well, I said after about 25 years, I started, started on a spiritual journey of saying, okay, well, it's, it's great that, that I can, you know, market things well. You and I, you're a graphic designer. We can make great brochures. We can make great websites. We can do all these wonderful things. Well, and I also went to school and studied a lot of advertising and yes. a lot of marketing and just trying to understand the way people think about products and business and what they respond to and don't respond to. And so between the both of us working together, right. I think we felt that we understood what our journey was in being in a business at all. Right. Whatever we were selling. Exactly. You know. So so here's about, yeah, so 25 years in, I think it's about five years ago, five, six years ago, you and I started reading different books and watching different programs about, and it wasn't a uh, spiritual, when I say spirituality, I don't want to confuse that with religion because it had nothing to do with that. It was more about becoming good with, with, our, uh, with our own, you know, being, being happy in your own skin or being a happy person. You know, that was my, I think that was my big thing. It's like, okay, I've got the successful business. Mm -hmm. We're doing, we're building beautiful products. People love them. I um, have great relationships with my customers, but I think that there's something more, more to the relationships with the customers. And yeah. I think that you and I realize and recognize that our, our, our strong points as a business was the relationships. But at the end well, of the day- it was day, definitely relationships because yeah. we now today still continue to have relationships with all these people, even though we don't really sell them anything anymore. Right. And we still connect with them and they still connect with us and we still have that you know, that connection in general. Right, so here's, so here's was a life-changing moment, I think for, uh, for you and I both, we both agree on this, and that's why we're even making this video, is we started on the journey of finding, you know, try, trying to find peace and gratitude for our, you know, for our customers, for our company, um, and we just recently went to something that was life-changing, and this is something that I, I, I wanna shout from Mountaintops, I want people to know about this, because this was, like I've read, again, all these books on, on how to be, you know, a happy person or a positive person, all the power of positive thinking in the mm -hmm. world. Um, and it, that can only get you so far. It's good information, good tools, and I it would never trade it for anything. I'm glad we, were on, we started on that journey um, five, six years ago. But Tony Robbins, and, and some people, we remember Tony Robbins back in the old days when he started. And we've, you know, he's a little older than us, so we've seen, we've seen his career, you know, go in front of us. We weren't ready to, to receive that kind of information. Um, up until recently, which is interesting, um, and it was Oprah. Actually, Oprah is the well, one. Well, I think we were watching the uh, Super Soul Sundays. Yep. And we were rolling through the different episodes of like ones that we thought would be good to watch. Right. And we saw the one with him on there, and I saw that. I'm like, cool, because I know that he's out there doing his thing, and he's doing seminars and does that. But I didn't realize that there was kind of like an updated version of what he's actually doing right now there's something right now and i think i think that he and oprah have probably always been friends or that i don't know what their relationship is but i see that right now she is noticing what he's doing and want to talk about it right and so i thought well cool let's watch this thing and we watched that and i got the impression that maybe he was kind of saying something new and different not new and different like in a way that he had not said it before but just maybe in a different way and so I think after watching that, it inspired us to then watch Guru, which was another... I'm not your guru. Yeah, another thing that he had done. Right. And that was more in-depth of, like, behind the scenes of him 
as a person doing what he does, which right. was cool too. And I think I, I'm not your guru. What it what it really that was like a, a glimpse of his three. I think it's a three or four day program. I'm not positive on that, but yeah, he it's has like a whole yeah, week long thing. right or a weekend. And his that what was so cool about that is it it gave you like a little insight of what the kinds of things that breakthroughs people are making. Um, and it wasn't about business, which I thought was very interesting. It, you know, you can translate anything, any breakthrough in your life or any any type of thing that's going to, self-improvement really encompasses everything. And mm-hmm. back to the coffee business, you know, if you if you are a much more grounded, happy, have gratitude, much happier person, you're going to be a much better business owner. You're going to be a better business leader. You're going to be a better person for yourself. When, the, when you turn the lights off at the end of the day and you're not at business, you'd be a happier person. Mm-hmm. So we watched I'm Not Your Guru, yeah. the documentary. Uh, and then on, that was inspiring. On and Netflix, I think, yep. And I think we got something out of that. Like we thought, wow, that, you know, I kind of like th- what he's saying here and what he's saying there and this and that. But then was it like a month later? Yep. Uh, I saw something on the internet or maybe it was a billboard, how he was going to come to town in Portland. Right. And so I thought, would that not be insane to actually go see it in person? Because we don't really do these things. Right. We don't really like take breaks to go do these things. Maybe right. we should, or maybe now we think we should. But yeah. I thought, let's do this thing. Let's let's go. And I didn't know what to expect. Even though I'd seen the shows, I you know, being there, I didn't know what, because he's got other speakers with him and stuff. So Well, yeah, I thought it was funny because on the I'm, I'm Not Your Guru movie, which it kind of freaked me out. He, uh, I remember at one point in the in that movie, in that documentary, he said, "You know, most people can't handle this. Like he's in a room full of thousands of people, and and it looked very, very intense. The type of of uh, breakthroughs people are making, and things right. he was talking about. Well, and how intimidating is it when he's there because he's got this like huge, powerful persona, and then he walks up to a person and he's like microphone in the face, right?" What's the matter with you? Right. <laughs> and and you're just like, ah, like I can't even like deal right now. And so I felt like going there, I was like, please don't let that happen to me. Uh, please don't put the microphone by me because yeah. I don't know well, if I can handle that. Yeah, and I feel like I'm I'm not afraid at all. I mean, not, I'm not afraid of like that type of thing. Typically, it wouldn't scare me, but but it's uh, it's Tony Robbins. It's not it's not a um, it's not your average person. That's you know that's asking these questions. So I I felt like okay. So we saw that we saw that I'm not your guru. Got very inspired. You booked the tickets for the um, for the Tony Robbins event in Portland, Oregon. The Portland one. Yep. And the, you got Gary V. Uh, you got Robert from Shark Tank. So there was three. And then there was a bunch of other. There was a couple other random guys. Very good, insightful yeah, people. So there was a lot great. of different speakers. And uh, you know it's interesting because the reason why we're even having this video, I am completely a changed person. And so I, I completely, I can't believe all the, all the things I've read, all the things I've done, all the exciting uh, information I've always received in business. And, and I'm like, hey, I got it licked. I know business. Um, and, and, I've, and I've been on a spiritual journey as far as self, you know, self-awareness and self-improvement, uh, mm-hmm. as, as they call it. Um, but this was insane. This took me to another level of self-awareness mm. and of breakthroughs. I can tell you without question, Mary, that when we were both there, I mean, we were both there, yeah. um, and we, we, we should tell the story. Well, we were, that, we, well you will tell Yeah, that. but we were both there. At the end of it, I was almost stunned. It was almost like, oh my gosh. My first thought was, you know, I don't have to, I, there's the journey of, I, I'm excited for more information, but I made such a big breakthrough. I felt like, okay, if there was a, a single event in my life, that was life changing. This was it, and that that is a lot for me to say because um, I've had you know birth of my children, amazing events. All you know, all these are all. Great. I don't want to diminish those, but as far as self awareness and, and self improvement, this was a single single well, most important. Well, and how about event. the fact that it was really only like a, a two and a half three hour moment with this person who was really channeling energy and information to a room of thousands. Seven thousand. Seven thousand. But people. I mean. Thinking about that in itself, it's like that must be pretty powerful. Very powerful. So, and there's unseen things that we don't, that none of us know about, that definitely happen in a, in a room full of seven thousand people. When you have one person that holds that room, and uh, and Tony Robbins is holding that room, mm-hmm. there, no question about it. Yeah. So I'm gonna start out the story. So we get there, and I'm freaked out. And I, and I'll tell you, I, I, my I was absolutely just completely intimidated by the whole event. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to. 
I don't want to be put well, on the spot. And what was the first thing I said? Whatever we do, we're sitting in the back. <laughs> Exactly. There is no way I'm sitting in the front. Right. I do not want to be in a confrontational situation at all. Right. Because I'm a natural observer anyway. And so I tend to want to, like, I'm going to sit back here and I'm just going to kind of see what's going on. Right. And so I think that that was my initial idea is I just want to observe what's happening. And, and then, you know, engage as needed or not. Right. But I felt like I wanted to uh, experience it that way. So... So here we are, we're in the back, and, uh, and we come, kind of came in and out for a few of the speakers, and right before Tony Robbins comes on, because he's at the end, he's the last three hours, I, I'm cracking up, because we sit down, it was in the, we're in the, we bought the least expensive tickets, because we're thinking, well, we'll be in the back, no big, no big deal, the general, kind of general seating. Mm -hmm. and, and there it, was, uh, it was a little bit of a problem finding a seat, because yep. there was so many people. It was packed. And we thought, we'll sit in the very back where there isn't as many people. Right. And then we tried to like stand and they're like, oh no, you can't stand, you have to be sitting for Tony. Fire Marshal says. So, right, so, so then we're. So my cousin, so my cousin, yes. I, I urged him to go. So he rolls in a little bit late and, and the chaperones are like, Fire Marshal says everybody has to sit down, nobody's standing. And because we were kind of leaning against the wall, watching, observing. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they, they chaperone my cousin up to these seats in the front. I think it was about the fifth or sixth row back um, they chaperone him and my other cousin to the front. And Even they though they had paid for the cheap seats in the back as well. Right. Randomly, as they just kind of entered in the auditorium, yep. someone brought them to the front. Exactly. Just randomly. Well, in the meantime, we're in the back, like maybe the last two back rows. Right. There's some seats we're like, okay, let's just settle in here. First come, first serve. Get ready to, yep. to have this moment. Yep. And then out of nowhere comes these two guys who've been gone from their seats for like, who knows how long they're like, yeah, you took our seats. And, and I, of course, find them, these are general seatings. That there's yeah, no... where it's kind of like first comes, if you get up and go to the bathroom, don't expect the seat to be available when you get back. Right. So, you know, that was kind of the known. Everybody knew if you're back here and you leave, when you come back, you're going to have to find a new place. And, so, and we were fine, but yeah. oh. we had the two. So we had the two, so we, we get, so we walk out walk out of the seats and we felt kind of defeated. I'm like, geez, there's not even, there's nowhere to seat. So we get kicked out of the back. Of the back. And now we're standing again and we're thinking, we're gonna need to find a place to sit because apparently you can't stand and, right. and watch this show. Yep. And after you know going through it, I do now know why. Yep. But um, then we were just standing there kind of thinking, what are we doing? Minutes. And then that's when the text on right. our phone came through. Minutes before Tony go comes on. Minutes, and it says, come to the front and we're like who's this and, and what who and then we realized it was your cousin who had been brought to the front and there just so happened to be two extra seats right next to them up there right and they said you need to come and i checked the time of what well, when did they send this now now and i'm thinking okay that must be some kind of call to action now mm -hmm. and so here we go up to the front to where they are, which my there cousin, they are. Yeah, my cousin asked the chaperone. He goes, Get "These two extra seats are these taken? Can can I invite my cousin?" And the chaperone said, "Yes. If they don't have a place to sit, they can sit there." Right. So we come up there, we sit down, and my first thought is, "Oh my gosh, I'm so happy we got a seat." My second thought is, "Oh my God, we're in the front. Tony's gonna approach us. We're freaked out." Or um, just <laughs> this is the opposite of what we wanted to happen. Right. We wanted to observe. Right. So so the the story goes like this. So so the thing starts. And I'm, I'm, of course, I'm not like super comfortable because I'm like, man, I'm in the front. I mean, I'm happy, but I'm also kind of freaked. And, uh, and then he starts out by talking about the story about Oprah. He says, and bring it back to Oprah. Oh, right. He How says, she couldn't like, or he said, for those of you that are concerned about sitting for a long time. Right. I, and then he tells a story how Oprah had actually said, listen, I'll come, but I can only sit for a short period. Yeah, and I'm probably going to leave. Or I'm probably not even going to hang. Right. And he's like, "No, you're definitely going to hang." And and then she did. And she did. You know, which was just kind of an introduction to any of you out there that might be thinking these things. Right. You know, don't think that. So he says he goes, "No, I'm I'm sure Oprah, you will be here for mm -hmm. the full duration." And she right. says, so, "Tony, no, I probably won't. I'm I'm a person that can sit for an hour and that's it." So I'm so I was I was eased. I was kind of eased. I'm like, well, maybe there's going to be something really amazing. I was hoping and expecting um, instantly 
lost all my fear of, oh, I'm stuck in the front or he's going to approach me. Instantly, he's walking around and he's walking around and, uh, and he walks up to me and you. And he says, it could be you or it could be you. Well, what happened was, though, is he was doing his walk by, right. which was a little bit scary because he's there and you're like, oh, okay, what's he doing? You know, but you're trying to get the information to you're right. listening and, you know, you're going along. But then in some kind of thing he was explaining, and I don't exactly remember what he was saying, but for some reason in the story, he kind of decided to stop at our row and gesture at both our faces real close with the finger. It could be you, or maybe it could be you. That's right. And then, you know, at that moment, I felt like I was like, <laughs> and then he and then he just kind of like smiled and kept on and I think that you know what you're saying is is that that channeled an amazing amount of energy that he has right. wherever he's getting it from it went through him and through his finger and at both us right and I think when that happened it really did uh, send an energy and that's an unforeseen thing you well, can't and, always say that yeah and and I don't want it to sound like like this experience we had was so life changing and it isn't like a hero worship or, and I felt very calm. I didn't feel intimidated when he was, you know, using us as an example. And he does take people out of the audience and out of 7,000 people, I may be seeing him do it five or six times maybe um, during the three hours. But so I did feel a little bit special. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. um, it felt very special, but I felt like there was an acceptance in my life. Like, you know, what, what, what this symbolized a couple things. We wanted to sit in the back. We didn't want to be the people in the front. We didn't want, it's sort of like we were the fear of success or the fear of being so close to, to success because he does symbolize success. I mean, the most successful person um, you can possibly imagine is one of them. Um, Gary V and, and Robert from Shark Tank as well. I mean, obviously, the I think that, I mean, there's no question that there was an energy and there was an inspiration. But more important than any of that, I think what, what I learned from all of it, and if, we, if I just were to sum up the whole three-hour experience with Tony, and by the way, we're definitely doing, um, we'd love to go to the, you know, his his other, his retreats where there are more like oh, you know, days in a row. Definitely. I'm very excited to do that, um, hopefully soon. But you know, my thing is, is, is I think what I, what I got away from the whole thing, I came away from the whole thing, which really blew me away, was the ability to, to get rid of fear. Because fear is what stops us in business. And that's what he kept pointing out. You know, what are the things that stop you in business? And fear is a big one. Fear is a huge one. We well, have... not to stop you at that moment, but fear kind of already happened when we went there. Right. Because we tried to go to the back out of what? Fear. Exactly. So we thought, let's sit back here because we're kind of afraid to be up there. Well, why? What's up there? That really symbolizes success right. or awareness or having to do something that you feel uncomfortable doing. Right. So just trying to go see the seminar in the first place was already a symbolization of fear. Right. And we actually were kicked out of the back seats and pushed forward to the front. That's right. I don't think that that, I mean, that to me feels like something that just happened based on universal thinking. That wasn't a mistake. That wasn't a, it, it wasn't an accident that we ended up in the front. When we tried to go there and sit in the back, we ended up in the front. Right. And we have no explanation for well, it. Well, and, and I think that I think that um, I think that what's what we're going to find at a certain point as business owners uh, at any given moment when you first think of an idea, it's fear. I'm fear of being a business owner. Fear of I'm not going to make any money. Fear that uh, the people around me are going to be disappointed if I fail. There's so many layers of fear that that's the biggest one. So being able to have gratitude also. Um, was the second part, which is fear and uh, gratitude diminishes all fear. So if you have gratitude that, hey, I have the opportunity, I have the opportunity to be a business owner, have gratitude for that. Have gratitude for the fact that you're in the coffee business if you're in it. Have gratitude for your, your employees and your customers. Have gratitude for yourself and take care of yourself first. And I think that's what we're lacking in businesses. People don't love themselves enough to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and these are all universal knowns. But we don't work on that. We work on the business plan and the, and the marketing scheme. And, well, and, and I think at one point, it, it doesn't even matter anymore what you're selling. Right. If you're not happy, if you're not well, if things aren't right inside, it wouldn't matter what you did. You could be working at a nine to five, selling whatever that nine to five is, 
and that's still probably not going to work for you. Exactly. So I want to end this by saying anybody that's getting ready to get in the coffee business or any business for that matter, please go to go to a Tony Robbins, read his books. Um, he's got excellent books, new books out now. He's got excellent information out there. He's amazing. Um, Gary V is amazing. I I mean that any of those people at, the, at these things are going to have information, but I think that you have to work on yourself first. And mm -hmm. I think that that's more important than being in the coffee business. That's, that is awesome. I love being in the coffee business. Um, keep, keep pursuing that. Um, but again, work on yourself first. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's huge. I think that it, it even transcends being in business. It, it also applies to family, friends, and the relationship you have with yourself as yes. a person. Yes. If you can't love inside, there's no hope for the outside. There's no hope for the outside.